Hello, algebra students. My name is Mr. Bean. I am a math teacher at... Rammstein High School in Germany. And I'm going to be your teacher for this unit. We're going to talk about systems of equations. Uh, I wanted to film myself in this very first lesson just so you can kind of get a feel for who I am a little bit and have a face with the voice. But I don't want to record this outside, so let's go inside. All right, welcome to our first lesson together. This is going to be focused on standard form equations of lines. What that means is that we're going to talk about this here. This is a standard form equation. And uh, sorry, hopefully I'm not distracting down here in the bottom corner as I hang out with you this lesson. Uh, this, this here, ax plus by equals c, that is what is called standard form. So you might want to uh, put that down on your notes so that you make sure you understand. This is standard form right here, where we have ax plus by equals c. Now this a, b, and c, those are usually numbers right there. We would have an a, a b, and a c as numbers. x and y are the actual variables. I know that's kind of confusing when we have so many letters going on here. This relationship can be represented as a line. You can graph this stuff. When we have only one variable instead of two, see this one we have an x and a y. We have two variables. When we have only one variable, I'm going to make up an equation here, like 3x plus 1 equals 4. If I solve this thing, and I end up with, let's see, 3x equals 3, subtract 1, divide both sides by 3, x equals 1. So we have one solution. The solution happens to be also the number 1, x equals 1. So we have only one solution when we have one variable. If we have more than one variable, then we're going to have more than one solution. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, is how we have all these different solutions when there's two variables. So to start us off, here, we have 5x minus y equals 3. Make sure you get that written down. And we're trying to circle which of these are solutions to this equation. So the first thing we do is remember that the first number is the x, the second number is the y. So we'll get those two mixed up. That's a, kind of a common mistake we'll see from a lot of algebra kids. So let's just take this equation, and we take 5 times 1 plus, no, not plus, whoops. I mean minus, and then we have a y, oh, I mean not y, 2. So I'm going to substitute in a 2 here because that's what y is equal to, equals 3. So if you look here, all I did is I took this equation, 5x minus y equals 3, plugged in the correct x and the correct uh, y, and now we can see if this is a true statement or not. 5 minus 2 equals 3. Is that true? Yes, it is. So then we'd have that 3 equals 3, so boom, we can circle that first one. We know that's true. So now let's try the next one. So we're going to take 0, 0 and plug in the correct, uh, the 0 into x, the 0 into 3. Well, this is going to go really fast. This 5 times 0 minus 0 equals 3. And that is not true because this is going to be 0 minus 0. 0 does not equal 3. So that one is not a solution. We'll just kind of cross that one off. So I'm going to pause the video here, and you try and finish this up real quick and see if you get the same answers as me. So pause now. When you click play, you'll see the answers. Okay, you can see here what I came up with. I've got that this, the middle one here, and then the last one were solutions if you plug in the right numbers to the x and y. And then this uh, fourth one here, I just stopped because I saw 10 minus 1. That's 9. I know it's not going to equal 3, so boom, I crossed that one off. All right, so what is one more ordered pair? What could we come up with uh, that we don't have listed here? Uh, the, there's several ways to do this. One way I do is I just pick any number for x. If I just said, I don't know, x equals, what's the number we have? We've got 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 3. How about x equals negative 2? Let's just plug it in and see what we get here. So then, uh, let me switch back colors. So I'm going to say 5 times negative 2, and again, you could have chose any number we want. didn't have to be negative 2, it could be anything. Minus y equals 3, and then this is going to be, uh, I probably didn't give you very much room on your notes here, negative 10 minus y equals 3, add the 10, and you get negative y equals 13. So y is going to equal negative 13. So our ordered pair would be x equals negative 2, and y would equal a negative 13. So there is another solution. Negative 2 comma negative 13. 
Now, how many more could we come up with? If we wanted to come up with all of this, the entire solution set, how many ordered pairs would we have? Well, there'd be an infinite number, as many numbers as you can think of to plug into the X or Y. You just plug it in, infinite, infinite, however you spell that, infinite. So however many numbers you want to plug in is how many numbers you could have for a solution. It just keeps going and going. So let's create a visual representation of all the solutions we've come up with so far. So let me look back at which ones we have. So one, two, let's put a dot at one, two, one, two, dot. What's another one? Uh, I had negative one, negative eight. So negative one, negative eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dot down here. Three, twelve. Well, that's going to be off the grid. One, two, three. And that's going to be off here somewhere. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's somewhere up here. Uh, just an estimate. And then the other one, what do we come up with on our own? We said negative 2, negative 13. And again, that's also going to be off the grid. So negative 2, way off the grid down here, negative 13. So I don't know, somewhere down there. Okay, so here we have just some random different points, but you can see they're all kind of forming a pattern here. So this goes to letter E. What is the visual representation of all the solutions from part D? So it is a line. In fact, let's go ahead and create that line. Try and just make it as straight, straight as possible if you can. You might need a straight edge or something. Just try to put that together on a nice straight line. So why does a line make sense? Let me tell you why. Because you could say x equals, oh, how about the square root of 5? Well, the square root of 5 is some weird, crazy decimal. It's irrational. It's this really long decimal that goes on and on and on and on. It's really hard to come up with this, so the coordinate point, like, you know, the square root of 5 comma what? What's the y value? We could figure it out, but this line just basically represents every single possible little point that we could come up with, all the decimals that are in between those nice, solid, round numbers. So it's everything. That's why a line represents all the points, and, uh, and that is the solution set of that original equation. Okay, so there's the concept of lines. Now let's go back to stuff you know how to do. Remember this slope-intercept uh, slope form? This is where this right here, that thing is called the y-intercept. And this thing here, this m is the slope, or in other words, it's the rise divided by run. Same thing as rise over run. So let's graph this thing. You take the y-intercept first, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me switch to blue. 1, 2, 3, 4. There is my y-intercept. And negative 2. So now I do a slope of negative 2. So I could go down to right 1. Or you could go up to and then left one, up to left one, up to left one. I just like putting more dots because it helps me draw a more accurate graph. Here's the thing. Before I start drawing this graph, you got to think about this. This is my clue for every time you draw a line. What is the slope? The slope is negative, and if it's negative, the line has to drop. Okay, You know that. It has to be going down from left to right. So if you don't have that, uh, let me use my tool to make a nice straight line. So if you don't have a line that's going down, you know you did something wrong. So that's a way to double check yourself real quick when you're done. Look at this slope. Is it negative or positive? And is your line negative or positive slope? So now we have standard form equations. Instead of slope intercept form, it's standard form. So the first three examples here, what we're going to do is just solve for y. If we solve for y, then it's going to look just like this slope intercept form because y will be by itself. All right, Mr. Kelly, or not Mr. Kelly, Mr. Sullivan already taught us a lot how to do these. So I'm going to subtract 4x from the left, subtract 4x from the right, and we get y equals negative 4x plus 5. Okay, now it's in slope intercept form, really easy to graph. So find my slope, 1, 2, or not slope, y intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's always Nice to start off with the y-intercept first. And now we have a slope of negative 4. So if its slope is negative, 
that means the line drops like this. So I could go up four, left one, which would be kind of dumb because it's off the grid, or I could go down four. One, two, three, four, over one. One, two, three, four, over one. And then I could go down four again, but I am off the grid there, so I mean, I'll do it, but it's a little weird. And then just try to draw a nice straight graph. Don't be sloppy here, okay? Try to be nice, clean lines. Yeah, I'm cheating because I've got a got a tool on the computer that helps me do this. All right, there's your line. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward, and then I'm going to double check my slope was negative, and yep, my line's going down from left to right. The thing is dropping slope. Okay, number three. Let's do the same thing. So we're going to solve for y, get y by itself. So first step is subtract 3x, subtract, and subtract. Now I have 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. Okay, so now this time y isn't by itself yet. I still need to divide both sides by 2. When you divide, it's just like multiplication. You know how multiplication distribute, distribute, distribute through? So this is the same thing. It's going to, dis this division is distributing to every single term. And then I've got y equals, okay, well, look, see this fraction? Negative 3 over 2, it's just negative 3 over 2 x. And then 4 divided by 2 is a positive 2. All right, let's graph this thing. There's my y-intercept of 2. And then I have a slope of negative 3 halves. That means I can go, the, the line should be going down like that somehow. Okay, so, so I just remember that. Going down. Going down. However steep it is, it's going down. It can't be going up because it's negative slope. So I could go 1, 2, 3 over 2. Or I could go up 3, 1, 2, 3 over 2. The important thing is, number on top is the up and down, number on bottom is the left and right. So up 3, down 3, and then left 2, right 2, and then that's, that's enough. Well, one more. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. All right, graph my line, and there I go. All right, so what I'd like you to do on this last one is go ahead and graph this one all on your own. Pause the video now, just give yourself a shot to try it on your own, and then when you hit play, I'll have the answer appear so you can see if you did it right. All right, there's my answer. This one had a positive slope. Now I'm gonna show you a couple places where I'm guessing several of you made a mistake. So if you look down here carefully, this is probably one of the first places that could have gone wrong was that there was still a negative in front of the 4y. After you subtract the negative 2x, that minus right there does not disappear. It had to still be attached to the negative 4 down here on the next line. And then dividing everything by negative 4 would mean negative 2 and negative 4, negative, negative, that's a positive fraction right there. So the 2 fourths becomes a 1 half. All right, so there is that one. Just kind of look over that one, pause here if you need to, try and follow my work to get that one correct. Because we're going to move on to the last thing, and that is graphing standard form, finding the x and y intercepts. So make sure in the lesson, in our practice, I mean, pay attention to the, the directions. Sometimes it'll just say graph it by solving for y. This one, it says find the x and y intercepts first. So here's what x and y intercepts are. We're going to use these a lot this year, so make sure you're paying attention. You have, in fact, I'm going to, maybe you can do this on the side of your notes. If you have an x, uh, an x intercept, an x-intercept occurs, oh man, I don't even know how to spell, occurs when, sorry for my sloppy handwriting, I'm trying to go fast, occurs when y equals 0. And a y-intercept occurs, can you guess when? Occurs when, and again, I'd write this maybe on the, on the side of your notes over there in the margin, uh, when x equals zero. So here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to make up a weird graph here. Let's say I have this kind of graph and it's going kind of weird curves all over the place like this, which we'll do these in algebra two. You don't have to worry about this crazy stuff for algebra one. So we have a y-intercept right there because this is the y-axis. We have a y-intercept right there and that coordinate point is zero comma negative something. I don't know, let's make something up. One, two, three, four, ne let's say it's zero, negative four. So you can see the y-intercept is always going to be zero something when x is zero. Okay, that's why the second one, the y-intercept occurs when x is zero. And now same with these. These are called the x-intercepts. Those are x-intercepts. When do they occur? When the y-value is a zero. So it's gonna be x, it's something 
comma, zero. It happens every time like that. So this is what's nice. Let's go back to these and show you how we do this. All we have to do is say we're going to find a coordinate point of zero, comma, something. Leave a space there. And then the other one's going to be something, comma, zero. And just leave a little space there. All right. So here we go. Watch how fast and easy this is. These are the two points we're trying to find. So if x is 0 right there, I'm going to have 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 6. That's 0, so it's gone. So 3y equals 6. Divide both sides by 3, and you get y equals 2. Boom! There we go. 0, 2. OK, let's do the same thing for this one. So now we're going to find uh, the other intercept. So if y equals 0, uh, let's see. We're going to take the equation 2x plus 3 uh, y is 0 equals 6. So then we get 2x equals 6. Solve this one and divide both sides by 2. x equals 3. OK, so 0, 2. Uh, 0, 2, that is the y-intercept, right? y-intercept because x was 0. I think in my, in my practice, you might double check. I think I do the x-intercept first in the practice, so don't get those confused. Just remember, if, the x, if it says x-intercept, you're doing 0 for y, right? So this one, I'm going to write that down so you don't get confused. This one is the y-intercept. Why? Because the x was 0. In this case, the y is 0, so this one represents the x-intercept. OK, let's finish this off. So then 1, 2, 3, 0. And now all you need is two points, and you can graph a line. Let's see how close I can get this one. Oh, so close. All right, there you go. So pretty good. Try to use a straight edge, and you can make it a little bit cleaner than mine. All right, let's try one more together, and then you'll try this last one on your own. Uh, all right. How about let's do the x-intercept on the left side here. So if we want to x-intercept, then the y is a 0, right? And if we're going to do over here, the y-intercept, then x is 0. So I, all I did over is just switch them. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in. You're just trying to find the intercepts. OK, so what does that mean? If y is 0, that whole thing is nothing. And all you have is 6x equals 24. See, I just saved us of some steps. That whole thing's just gone. Divide both sides by 6, and x equals 4. So 4 comma 0. 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 0. And then this one x is 0, so that whole thing is just gone. And all I have left is negative 4y. Don't forget the negative there. Equals 24. Divide both sides by negative 4, and you get y equals negative 6. So negative 6, that's down here. 0, negative 6, and you can graph the line. All right, there it is. OK, so number seven, try this one on your own. Find the x and y intercepts. The order doesn't really matter. Just kind of make sure you're distinguishing and graphing them correctly. And then uh, after you have that, push play. And we'll see if you get the same answer as me. OK, this is kind of a tricky problem here because it was 5 fourths. Now, how did I get that? Because if y is 0, you have 4x equals 5. And then when you divide both sides by 4, you get this weird uh, fraction. OK, so that's really hard to graph. x equals 5 fourths. Boom, I kind of estimated right about there. So this is a really good example where finding the x and y intercepts might not be the easiest way to graph it, but it still is a way that you can see exactly where it's supposed to cross the x-axis. And then let me show this one real quick. If the 0 was the x, that whole thing's gone, and it's just y equals 5. That one's real simple. OK, we finished our first lesson together. Nice job. Uh, Make sure you go through the practice, check your solutions, check your solutions over and over. And for those of you who are on the mastery system, rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in the next lesson.